Okay, uh, meeting of the Waitlist Select Board uh, called to order at 6.02 p.m. on uh, Wednesday, May 11th, 2022, um, on this beautiful day. Um, I will um, uh, hear a motion to um, approve, vote on and, and potentially approve the uh, minutes from last time. Move to approve the minutes from the meeting of April 27. Uh, second that. All those in favor, Fred? Yes. All those in, uh, Joyce? Aye. Me, yes. Good. Um, I signed vendor and payroll warrants uh, today. Anybody think that I should not have? <laughs> no comments from me. Nothing from me. All right. Good. Um, public comment from anyone uh, on items not listed on the agenda? Three for three. Uh, Amy no, has, Amy something. Schrader has something. She's in the meeting. Amy Schrader's here. Has oh, okay. I'm sorry, Amy. That's okay. Um, so for anyone watching who doesn't know, I'm Amy Schrader, the town clerk. Um, I want to let the townspeople know that the annual town election will be held at the town hall on June 14th from 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. You must be registered to vote by May 25th at 8 p.m. to participate. Um, for more information in regards to candidates running for office and absentee ballots, you can go to the town's website and it's right in the news, right on the front. Um, and I will also ask the moderator to announce this information at the annual town meeting, which is held on May 24th at 6 p.m. And there will also be an article in the, in the Waitley Scoop on elections and dog licensing information. And, so spread and, the word, please, that the election is at the town hall. One, one town hall or... Town hall. town hall. Town hall. Yes. And Amy, can you remind people where the uh, town meeting will be held? At the Waitley Elementary School outside, weather permitting. And weather not permitting? Inside. Yes. It would be inside. Just making sure we're, we're, we're thorough. <laughs> yep. Okay. Thank you very much. Anything else? Okay. Anything else, Amy? Oh, no, that's it. Okay. Great. Vote early and vote often, everybody. Um, I see Fran Fortino. That means that the Board of Health is up at 6.05, and coincidentally, it is 6.05. So Fran, what do you got for us? Um, as you can see from your agenda, we are recommending from the Board of Health th to the second <laughs> that the town opt out again from the state's mosquito spraying program. Um, we prepared, we did the same last year, um, along with a lot of other towns. It was significantly more difficult last year. This year, we have to provide a alternative mosquito management plan, which I sent and you've probably read, mm -hmm. and a checklist, which we also sent and you've probably read. Um, but I can put it up if you need to, if there's any questions about that. But the third step is for the select board to take a vote after public hearing, which this is, and um, approve and send a certified approval vote to, along with the other two documents to the state mosquito control board. I believe that's it. And I think I sent the number or the, the email for that. It's on the documents and um, basically that's it. And if you have any questions, happy to answer them. Any questions from my august colleagues? No, I, I looked over the documents you sent in advance and I thought it was pretty clear and I'm happy to sign that or sign the letter that goes with it. As Fred, am I. You, you're all set too, Fred? Yep. Okay, um, since, since this is a public hearing, um, I'll open it up for public comment about the proposal from the Board of Health to um, bypass the state spraying. Hearing no comments from the public, um, I would entertain a motion to adopt the Board of Health recommendation to bypass um, state spraying. Second. I, I, well, I, I thought you I moved. moved. <laughs> okay, then I'll second. Did I, I I'm sorry, I, I got a lot of garbled stuff because I think everyone was talking at once. Who made the motion? Uh, I think I did. I think okay. Fred did, yeah. All right, and Joyce has the second. Okay, all those in favor, Fred? Yes. 
Joyce? Aye. Me, yes. Uh, Brian, does that satisfy you in terms of what you're going to send off to the state? Yeah, thank you. Fred, uh, and Fran, you're good? Thank you very much. Um, I think it's a wise move. We did check the historical Triple E records and Whaley is categorized as low risk, along with all of the other surrounding communities. It's been a dry spring, not much snow melt, so should be good actually this year. We will be putting things at uh, the mosquito control um, or mosquito prevention brochure in the scoop. Joyce coming up and we'll put, have Amy put it up on the website, et cetera, for notification to the public. Great. All right. Thanks. Thanks to the Board of Health. Thank yep. you. Thanks, Fred. Thank you. Yep. Um, we will move to old business to review and vote to approve. Uh, well, Keith, what do you got for us in terms of Chapter 90? All right. Um, I just wanted to go back over the projects, the project request that I'm going to be submitting for your, you know, your approval. We pretty much discussed these all a few weeks ago, and the only one that was really of highest important for me to get in the in the process was the river road notice of intent for the culvert replacement, and that is moving forward. That one has already been accepted. I have a conservation commission meeting on the 18th for the notice of intent on that. So that one's moving forward. So the next ones that we had talked about before, I'll just go over them again with you and then look for your approval. Um, so River Road also, we're doing, in addition to that culvert replacement, we're continuing further north uh, as we have started over the past couple of years, started at the Hatfield Town Line doing crack sealing. I am, will be finishing River Road crack sealing all the way to the Deerfield Town Line. We'll also be crack sealing um, some other streets, um, Sandy Lane, Fairview Way, and um, Sugarloaf Street Extension, and a little bit on Long Plain Road near Fairview Way, I mean, near Sandy Lane. And that estimate is at $42,000. The next one is Haydenville Road, and that will be to do from the intersection of Chestnut Plain Road to Masterson Road. And that will be leveling the bad spots and minor ruts that are in the pavement with um, blacktop. And then it'll get sealed with a rubber asphalt. And then that is $175,000. That's a pretty large project as far as, you know, pretty a long, long stretch of pavement. The next one is um, for our current excavator. Um, looking to get some more equipment for it, the a grapple, which will allow us to um, to do things like pulling out um, trees over the embankment, pulling guardrails, things where you can easily use the excavator to grab onto material and not have to subject the employee to go over an embankment to hook a chain to things like that. So um, it certainly will will provide more um, efficient operation of the excavator and at the same point in time, reduce the possibility of someone getting hurt or injured. Um, another thing was also purchase a, a ditching bucket that we can use. It's a, it's a specialty bucket shaped in the shape of a big V, like the letter V, and it will um, work on the shoulders to, to clean and maintain our drainage ditches. Um, those two items, the grapple is 12,000 and the ditching bucket is just about 4,000. So it comes up to around 16,000 for that. The next item is on Dickinson Hill Road and Masterson Road. We'll be chip sealing that this year. Um, and that is at $22,000. And the last thing I have is um, Fairview Way which is at the end of the road by the um, bear or where Deerfield Urethane building was, Covestro, they keep changing their name, but um, the detention basin. I'm looking to 
make improvements to the detention basin so that in the winter time when the ground is frozen and we get flash rainstorms where we've had many instances in the past where the road floods because the water goes into that detention basin and it just cannot soak into the soils because the ground is frozen. So this will be providing an avenue for the water to leach underneath the frozen ground in the, in the winter time and should alleviate that winter time flooding. Um, and that is at $10,000. So going back to, I'll just recap our chapter 90 balance. Going into this, we are at $275,000 of my chapter 90 balance that I'm carried forward from last year. Um, we have been pretty conservative in the past because we were also expecting to have to make a large contribution to the Haydenville Road Project, which we know at least the, from the matching aspect of the design, we don't have to meet that. However, we, we may need to have some money for easements as we go forward. But anyways, we had $275,000 carried forward. We also this spring have received what's called RAP money, which is the Winter Recovery Assistant Program, which gave us just about $105,000 or $104,000. And taking into consideration the FY23, Chapter 90 apportionment that I will have come next fiscal year, that's about another 143,000. So that brings me to having a, available funds of about $522,000. The projects that I'm just went over just now total 274,000, which will leave me right about $250,000. So I'll about where I started. And again, I feel um, we'll be in really good shape should we, once we start to get the information from Haydenville Road, from all of the land takings that are necessary, should we need to use any of the Chapter 90 money for purchasing, you know, coming up with those easements. So, um, uh, does anybody have any questions? The only question I have, are the RAP monies more restrictive in their use than with the general chapter 90? Correct. Uh, you know, in the, in the past when they were given us that they were looking at um, being tied to a um, budget money to the point where we've gotten it in the past in the springtime and we have to have it spent by June 30th. This is not the case with this amount. We don't have to have it spent until um, June of 23, so we have a full year to work for it. Um, and basically, with the eligible expenses that are, it is be able to be used for is basically what a lot of the projects we're looking at doing is going to fit that description. Okay, I just want to make sure that we had projects that were eligible for that rather than the general funds. Yes, Joyce. I have a um, question. You were talking about Haydenville Road from Chestnut Plain to Masterson, and it seemed like, I mean, $175,000 worth of repairs to the road is a lot to do when, isn't that road going to get replaced in a year or two? No. Or is that, so that part is not a part of the, quote, the Haydenville Road? Correct. The, the, the big project that we're looking forward in 2025, which is, mm -hmm. you know, as we know, mm. in the $10 million range is from the intersection of Conway Road to the town line. Okay. So for $10 million, they can't bring it into 10, huh? Okay. I'm just saying. Nope. Okay. No, I wanted him to make, because I, I knew there was something like that going on, but I wanted, I couldn't remember what it was. All right. Thank you. Keith, is there a cap on, and I, and I know you know this, but I, I'm just curious, is there a cap on the amount of Chapter 90 money we can use for takings if we need them, or is there no cap? That I don't have that answer as to, I know it's an it's eligible expense. Um, and until we really start to get the information from our um, 
what our legal team would you say brian is that fair to say when, when they start to give us more of an idea of once we have appraisals done um we'll then begin to have a better handle on it certainly um it's north the city of northampton is the biggest landowner and we were definitely would hope that we're looking at a donation um it is my intent in the next few weeks to at least start the conversation with with the, the personnel there Keith, would it be your intention to do the relative we do the real, relatively short stretch between masterson and conway road soon yeah. or upon completion of the the other project no the the little piece that's between masterson and conway road yeah, yeah. Have, that that section needs to have some drainage improvements in the area of um like the 150 no like 180 i don't remember the numbers exactly but um there's there's currently some drop inlets that take the water from one side of the road to the other side of the road, and those need to be replaced. And that is something that will probably be in next year's request. Um, and so that once we, by the time we get to 2025 and the, the rest of the road is done, Haydenville Road should be set for years to come. Good. Okay. All right. All right, that sounds good. Any uh, any any other questions for Keith? I have no more questions. I have no more questions. Okay, I will notify Brian to let you not be notified when the um, project requests are on the table in the, at the town office for signatures. We need to vote to approve these. Requests. Yes. Um, I would like to. I, I would encourage a motion just to uh, accept them all as a lump sum, unless somebody has a beef with one of them. No. So we'll to accept the Chapter Ninety project requests as Keith has detailed. Second. All those in favor, Fred. Yes. Joyce. Aye. Me. Yes. Thanks, Keith. Nicely done. Thank you. Thank you. Um, annual town meeting warrants. Are we going to go through each of them again, Brian, or is this more of a, has anything changed wrap up? Uh, there's a couple of things to talk about. Um, if you would consider possibly, I think Keith has to go somewhere and I think you want it to be present for the electric, the EV charging stations discussion. Um, yeah, I, I have about another 15 minutes or 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm happy to move. Let, let's let's go to the recharging then. Yeah, let's do that. Stations, um, so that Keith has a little bit of wiggle room. That's uh, neat. Yeah, go ahead, Hannah. Um, so uh, I had the chance to meet with Joe Robinson from Energy Source, not Eversource, but Energy Source, to talk about the car charging stations around town. Um, during one of our site visits, he let me know that there's a cost to applying to this grant program of about $15,000 per station. Um, so because of that, I'm wondering, one, is that money that you would like to set aside? Is this a project that you'd like to continue with? Um, if that is a possibility and two, or rather if we have to pay that money in two, um, which sites are the select board's priority um, if we do move forward with that project? We're gonna meet with Laurie Scarborough from FERCOG on Friday to talk about any alternatives to energy source, just in case there's a way that we could do a workaround and it would be a little bit cheaper. But um, right now, that's the information that we have. I'm curious, Hannah, what is the ration, what is their rationale for charging $15,000 per proposal, per station? What, what, what's the, have we seen a, a, a budget for this 15,000? My guess is that it's supply chain costs um, that have significantly risen within the past couple of years that are contributing to this. Um, uh, I don't know. That smells a little high to me. Yeah. I, mean, I, would, I, mean, I, would, I would charge a station at home. It was like significantly less than $1,000. Now, granted, mine's a domestic indoor one, but 15000 is like 20 times the cost. And, um, and then somehow this just gets us a grant where the grant is paying for something. 
And then looking at the, the sheet you sent us, I assume we are looking at the ones that are either DC fast charging or public access charging, where the grant is supposed to cover 100% at government owned properties. Yeah, that's what I was confused about too. Um, and I'm not sure what exactly that 15,000 is comprised of, which is why we're hoping to talk to Lori Scarborough on Friday. Yeah. No, I, I would definitely say talk to talk yeah. to somebody else because this doesn't smell right. It, yeah. it, it's a poison pill kind of. Um, whether it's intended to be a poison pill or not, I don't know, but it's a poison pill. And, and my concern is that, you know, again, we are a small town. Part of my part of my interest in doing this is obviously to give people who have who have made the the, the great investment in a, in an electric vehicle to, um, to to use them and give them access to, to charging stations. But the other incentive is to to encourage other people to actually take the leap because there are charging stations out there, and and looking for a charging stations not going to be an inconvenience that some people will see it as. Um, but at fifteen thousand dollars a pop, when I'm not convinced the charging stations are going to—I'm I'm not sure they're going to be lining up like they did during the '73 oil crisis. Um, mm -hmm. You know, just see if Lori can work magic. But that really—it really bothers me. Uh, yeah, I th that didn't smell right to me either. I was also surprised at that cost, and that program doesn't look difficult to apply to. So if Lori can give us the information we need, ideally, I could just put in an application and then. Maybe oh, we wouldn't okay. have to pay that fee. Um, I, th but, I, man, think, I have faith in your ability <laughs> to put in an application. <laughs> um, and, and if you don't charge us you know, 15,000 bucks a pop, um, then, uh, then all the better, right? Yeah. yeah. If you can do it on your own, we'll mm -hmm. buy you a beer. <laughs> oh. Deal. <laughs> yeah, we'll take you out for, like I don't know, something. <laughs> okay, that sounds great. <laughs> All right. Why don't um, we just put, put this over to the next meeting and Hannah can go back yeah. to that before. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, Sounds Hannah. That You're meeting Lori this Friday, you said? Yes. Okay, great. Okay. Yep. Yep. Um, um, then let's go back to the warrant. Unless, Keith, you want to say something about the charging stations? No, I, I was just, you know, I, I didn't know if, if we were going to get into uh, situation as far as prioritizing and I you know just wanted to see what your thoughts were and and that's all but I, I think that's a conversation for next meeting now yeah with this that's revelation right. Okay. all right good night everybody thanks Keith good night thanks. all right Brian what do we want to talk about with the warrants um we need to approve them yeah last time we went through basically what was at the time page six, but maybe it's no longer page six. I'm scrolling through the one you sent, the most recent one you sent about, I don't know, two hours ago that had maybe some wording updates. <coughs> we had approved some of this, but my memory yeah. might not be correct. I think we went up through, I thought we went through the budget. Yeah, we did. And we then did. The, that, that was, so that's like middle of page seven now. Is the, was the planning board stuff after before the budget? After. Yeah, we went through planning board too. I think we went through 14 is what I had listed. Yeah, we went through planning board. So, um, okay. Um, so I, I did hear back from town council. So there were, he, had, he suggested the um, inserting two commas and um, the term other. Um, which was missing from Article 20. Yeah. Hey, it sounds uh, like sounds like this guy is earning his uh, money. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I from our previous discussion, and I had to change the, the recommended majority on uh, one of the zoning articles, which are always required to third vote. Oh, okay. Uh, but other than that. Um, it's basically there, the same. There was one thing that last time we found that you had had an old yep. allocation that got changed. I don't have the old one in front of me. Yeah, that was, that was for the water department. Yeah. It was the $5,000 to, it's Article 16. Yeah, yeah. to upgrade and the pumps at Westbrook Road. Westbrook oh. Road. Right. <laughs> um, got turned into a pickup. 
Instead, it's for a pickup truck. Uh, instead, it's for a pickup truck. Sorry, West Westbrook Road residents. Ah, oh, thought we were going to get another new pump. Okay. Hope the power stays on for you. All right. Well, <laughs> hopefully, the new pump they put in last year will be sufficient. Um, and then the other change was. Um, we we discussed this, but Article Twenty Six. Yeah. It, it, in some in Article Twenty Four and Twenty Five had had the discussion about um, uh, the the use for trucking, commercial trucking, um, which the planning board voted not to recommend. So that's been taken out. Okay. And then Article Twenty Six was added, um, and we had discussed this. This is the this is the commercial rezoning of of a parcel on State Road that was originally on the yeah. fall special town meeting last year. Yeah. Um, and there were some issues with the uh, the wording of the notice, the public hearing notice. So we, we tabled that or special town meeting tabled that. And the planning board is asking that it, that it be brought back up for a vote. So that's article 26. Okay. That's the parcel immediately north of uh, the current uh, Monaghan parcel that has the, uh, the trucks on it. Okay. Is the Monaghan property is currently zoned commercial? Yeah. Okay, so it's the one that's immediately north of the barn there. Immediately north, yeah, it's a yes, barn there. And again, just as a reminder, the zoning articles add definitions to marijuana courier and marijuana delivery. Um, and then they allow those uses by special, well, if adopted, it would allow those uses by um, special permit in the commercial, commercial, industrial, and industrial. So, right. And 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 we're we're we are preparing for a number of questions around that. It, it was, right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 the I, basic I, one being what's the benefit of adopting this? as opposed to not adopting it. If we adopt it, my understanding is, then these kinds of businesses can locate in Waitley. If we don't adopt it, then they can't, uh, or they cannot, it's, or it's ambiguous that whether they could or could not. I think, it's, I think it's the first one where they can if we adopt this. If we don't adopt it, then they could not. Right, and, and we need okay, some- I see Brian's head's going up and down, okay. Right. We need someone who can just who can who can knock that answer out of the park in a very succinct way. I, I've seen a handout that um, I've seen a um, the planning board has somebody prepared to speak after the zoning okay. up, our zoning amendment is read. Okay. Okay. And I and I of course inserted the budgets that were not in there last time. Okay. And I'll remove the watermark draft. I hope. You know, you know, you you know, we can't read that fast, Brian, right? Well, I read it over before, but yeah, I, I mean, I, I'm fine. I, I didn't have a chance, but um, do, you want, do we want to go through? No, well, we, no, 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 we we went through them one by right. one last time. Yeah, we don't need to. Hey, there's, why there's is there a couple commas? Why is there? Go down a little bit, Brian. Why is there a grammar check on make do of? Is that really the correct language? If you go down to page 13. And again, I know I'm make, making the same money as the attorney right now. Hear of, fail not, and make do return. Is that really the language? That's, that's the legal language, yeah. Okay. Huh. Well, no one ever claimed that lawyers were, were good writers, so okay. Yeah, well. Okay, that's fine. Um, I would hear, does anybody have any comments before I look for a motion? I'm good with them. I'm fine. Uh, I would look for a motion then. Uh, I move we approve uh, the warrant as written with our recommendations under the articles where it says recommended by the select board. Second. 
All those in favor, Joyce. Aye. Fred. Yes. Me, yes. We're good and ready for town meeting. I'm gonna have to practice my lines this time. Exactly. Hey, hey, Brian, will we be having a select board meeting the night after town meeting or is this in lieu of? Or should we schedule something ahead of time if it's gonna be a light agenda? Um, so your regular meeting would be on, on the following Wednesday, um, the next day. Oh, uh, not the next, yeah, it would be the next day, wouldn't it? The next day, right. Yeah, so, it, you know, in years past, you know, pre, you know, before Brian, um, we once in a while would schedule our select board meeting for like 5.30 or 5.15 if it was a light agenda. But if it's not, we can have it on the regular schedule. I'm just throwing it out as an option just to have the select yeah. board meeting preceding the town meeting. No, we know we're going to be hearing back from Hannah on the charging stations. Yeah. At the very least. Anything yeah. else? <clears throat> I haven't received anything that's that's time sensitive. Yeah. I just sort of, I mean, if you guys want to meet, that's fine. I just know that in years past, you know, we, we did that a, a fair amount, actually. Right. Uh, yeah, we'd have like a, a half hour meeting before the town meeting. Right. Um, so meeting <laughs> but if you guys want to meet, that's fine. I'm just throwing yeah. it out. I am. Uh, I'm actually going to be on the road. So, I mean, I will have internet, so I'll be able to um, plug in. I will make sure I'm at uh, someplace with internet by 6 p.m. Um, so I, I'm still fine with that. Um, but I'm, I am hoping it will be a short meeting. Would you be on the Would So you'll be back on Wednesday, though, Joyce, or no? No, I'm leaving on Wednesday to be on the road, but we're breaking up the trip. I'll be someplace with internet at six o'clock so I can still attend I um, okay. by Zoom, yeah. I, I'm in favor of, of, of scheduling a, a, a meeting on, on the Tuesday just at the town meeting thing and, and just doing that. At, at, we can even do it at five. Fred, you have, a, you have an angst looking on, I'll look on your face a little bit. Or no, my other thing is what's our timeline? When do we need to make this decision? Uh, and we can tentatively schedule a meeting, you know, a shorter well, meeting, yeah. but it can back be changed right. you know, for notice purposes. Right. So, so 48 hours, the board can, the board's allowed to communicate on scheduling and administrative matters via email. Um, mm -hmm. So we could, we could change it up until we need to post it. So yeah. Friday. I, I don't object to it being the next day if it makes things kind of simpler for town meeting day, because I know there's a lot of kind of all hands on deck work being done on town meeting day. Um, I, I don't have any particular reason to, to, to try and kind of squish that in on the 24th. I, I'm fine with doing it the day after, having a meeting the day after. Okay. That's yeah. fine. That's fine. I just threw it out there. Okay. Um, Let's move on then to new business. Um, temporary office space to the staff of the South County Senior Center. Um, I don't know, Brian, you wanna take this or you want me to take it? Yeah, I can speak on this. Yeah. Um, and I provided the board a little bit of information beforehand. Yeah, very yeah. cool that. There's, so as we, I'll just give you a status update of, of the South County Senior Center currently, because um, it's, it's been a while. Um, so currently, the South County Senior Center building, which is the um, that brick building in the in the center of town, I forget what its name is, but um, I think everybody knows what I'm talking about. Um, so it the building itself has never reopened to seniors. Um, currently. Uh, the South County Senior Center has a has a short term lease with um, with uh, uh, Holy Name Parish, I think it is called Holy Family. Uh, Holy Family yeah. um, to use their they they have a, a larger room that the seniors uh, meet in, yeah. and they have some of the activities there. Uh, there's no office space for staff there, so so staff are still in the old building um, when they have to do work. Currently, that the building, um, currently half the building is used for um, COVID-19 testing. So, mm -hmm. uh, and I'm not sure, I don't think it's every day that that happens, but 
Two times um, a week. Two times a week. Two times a week. So they have about half the space uh, within the senior center. Um, and at some point, my understanding is possibly by early June, they're hoping to get a tent back up to do some of the activities outdoors. Um, the building has a lot of issues. Um, but yeah. it, I'm not. I'm not breaking any news here. Yeah. Um, Deerfield had an assessment done of the building, um, which confirmed that there were there were issues with with the basement, which um, has been off limits, you know, for a number of years. Um, they're not in, they're not new issues. Yeah, they're not new issues, right? I right, they're not new problems. Um, and then there's there's con so that's the basement, and then there's the floor with the I'll call it the first floor. Which, where the senior center is and used to be located. Um, that's where half of it's for the testing and half of it's for um, senior center staff. And then there's the floor above that, I'll call the second floor. Um, not in great condition. It, it, it's not in a good condition. Um, it's open to the, there's a third floor above that. Um, it's open to that via hatchway. Um, so there, it's pretty clear that there's probably animals and other things on that, um, on that floor. Dead and alive. What's that? Dead and alive. Mm -hmm. And it's it's not a place that we're, in my opinion, who we want staff on. Um, so. Okay. Um, so what I'm I, hearing is you don't want us moving your office there. I, yeah, I would not like that. Yeah. Um, okay. I would I would really not want to be in that building if I had a choice. Yeah. Um, so but with that in mind, I started thinking about whether there was alternatives where we could put or, or offer to put South County Senior Center staff. Again, it's a, the Board of Oversight is the supervisory body of the South County Senior Center. Um, and it's really their decision, I think, as to where staff would, would be located. Um, it, so I, I wanted to say all that. Also, I want to let you know that um, Deerfield, has appropriated money to um, renovate the congregational church that's uh, the former congregational church that's located next door to that building. Mm. Um, and we're told that the timeline for them starting construction of what we're told would be a temporary space for the senior center um, and they're getting help from Deerfield Academy. Start of that construction would be um, September at the earliest. Uh, and it has not, to my knowledge, it has not been confirmed whether that's going to include office space or not. Um, I don't think those plans are, are yeah. finalized yeah. yet. Yeah. But even if it does, it's from September. Right. Yeah. Well, beyond September, you know, because yeah. construction will probably take it up to the holidays. Okay. I would imagine it, it would be, yeah, um, next January. Probably. Yeah. Um, so uh, we're trying to figure out solutions, at least temporarily, as to as to how we could alleviate that situation. Um, and the, the town administrators have been talking. Um, my understanding is that is that Deerfield doesn't have the space on a temporary basis to provide um, these folks a, a, a different accommodation, because um, we're really talking that the director is full time. Um, and then there's a uh, community outreach person and a program coordinator and they're, Jonathan, they're both less than 20 they're, hours. I think, they're right? both 15, but the majority of those 15 are spent at the senior center during program hours. Right. So we're really talking about, you know, uh, a temporary space for one person. Um, well, but, but Brian, to be fair, the other two would be in and out because that's where the right. staff Right. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. I don't mean it to come across as we just need, you know, a, right. a small space. Um, so that's sort of the, the discussion that's that's been happening, and Jonathan and I have discussed this a little bit. Um, so, I mean, sort sort of what Jonathan and I have been talking. Do you want to talk about it, Jonathan, or do you want me to keep going? Well, no, I'll, 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 I'll butt in. Um, what I would like to propose with the support of both this group and 
um, the comfort of our Waitley town staff, which is obviously important, is that we give temporarily, meaning probably for six months or so, um, desk space, laptop, phone, that kind of thing, or whatever they need to, you know, again, primarily the director because she's full time and she spends a lot of time non, at, not at the senior center or not at the now Holy, Holy Family. Um, and some space for the other two people, because as Brian correctly points out, it is not an acceptable work environment where they are now. Um, and, and I'm just not comfortable having them work there any longer. Um, so I, I believe Brian has touched base with, I, I don't want to speak for you, Brian, but if he hasn't, he will be touching base with staff to make sure that they're comfortable, but um, with the increase in, num in number of people and foot traffic. But, but I would like to be able to go to my peers on the Board of Oversight and, and let them know that I'm asking them to ask our, the senior center staff to work out of the Whitley Town offices for probably six months until the construction of the congregational church is, is complete. Can you say where do you think, um, Brian, would this, the desks be, would they be in that, that room that's kind of behind the one, there's a copy machine in that room and then there was some extra room. I know occasionally we use that for meetings, but there seemed to be a place for desks there. Is that the space you're thinking of? I, I think there's two likely spots. Um, one could be, I mean, this room is rarely used during the day if at all, they're cleaning oh. the conference room. And also there, 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 could, be, there could be space out back too. Um, hmm. This room would be a little bit more private um, if, mm -hmm. if conversations with private nature are gonna happen. Yeah, um, yeah so but would, with, with July 15th coming up though, that room might start getting more use um, in the evenings and we might, I mean, would we want, would they want their desks in a room that are gonna be hosting public meetings at night? I don't know, but... Uh, uh, I, I imagine we don't get the attendance um, that would mean we couldn't share that space the way you say. So I would I would not want to butt in and say which one, but I just wanted to see what your ideas were about the spaces. I, personally, I would I would like to see them have a space that where they're not going to have to worry about their stuff if they have stuff. Um, because of meetings, I, I would I would love to see them in the in the in the in the room with with our, our other staff um, during this time frame. They're all nice people. Um, everyone's going to yeah. get along well. Um, I don't I don't believe that it's an undue um, distraction again because <clears throat> the majority of the time, for certainly for two of them, they're not even going to be there. Um, but yeah. for the director. Yeah, she'll she'll be there some, but she's also at the senior center oftentimes from nine to one, uh, whenever there's there's programming going on. So I I don't I don't like the idea of, of the main conference room because again it's not it's not it's secure. Not, yeah, it's not secure. Yeah, it's not their it's space. Secure. You, like you really do feel like you're a, a real guest as opposed to a quasi guest. Yeah, I guess my only thought is that this door locks here and the other space back there does not lock. Right, but I mean, I would have no problem giving these people keys for the time being. I mean, right, but I, I, I guess I'm just thinking the. Um, oh, thank you, dear. Um, uh, I, I guess my thought was more of um, can their desks be locked, right? So if there, if there's a desk in the conference room, and we have, you know, people in there, at uh, after hours for meetings, legitimately, right? Um, we don't want things from their desk being out. Um, they'd have to put everything away. It's a little bit more secure for them to maybe be in the back room because we don't have members of the public going back there. But I, I'm, I don't think we need to, the three of us, worry about that so much. I would just say when you're figuring, I, I'm, I'm fully supportive of this, and but when you're figuring it out, I think the people who work in that front office should have a a, a large say in where that desk goes. Um, if they want it in that same room with them, I mean, we are going through a, like a surge now, 
<laughs> so maybe it would be better if it was actually in a separate room. Maybe they'd be more comfortable. I can't speak for them, but I, it sounds like there's multiple options and I think we should support this just because we're good neighbors. I, I think we should, why don't, can we just invite the director and whoever over, walk them through and see what spaces they might prefer and if they, you know, yeah. if they prefer any. Yeah, if, if the board's inclined to offer it, then right. I would definitely do that. Yeah, I, I think what, yeah, Fred, and that's a good idea. Um, but I, I think that it probably makes sense for me to figure out how to have a, a an acknowledgement from the Board of Oversight that they're, I, I think they will be comfortable with it, but I just wanna make sure that I go through the right procedures and I don't act unilaterally. Um, you know, I'm just the chair. I don't right. have any more sway than anyone else. So. Um, if you guys were okay with it, I will reach out to them. Uh, am I allowed to do that, Brian? Probably have a meeting. Um, then I have no problem having Brian reach out to them. There you um, go. <laughs> um, and 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 let them know that we're making this offer. And um, I I. It can be an email vote as far as I'm concerned. Maybe that maybe I'm breaking about five open meeting laws by doing that. But again, this should be something that can be it needs to be done quickly. Um, and I don't really have a lot of patience for the nuances of open meeting to 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 wait around for. So Brian, you tell me what I need to do, what I don't need, what I can't do, and I'll heed your advice. I don't know if we need a resolution or anything but I think it'll be a good motion yeah I, I move we the, authorize uh, Brian and Brian and uh, John to decide the the details but that we support having uh, making office space available to the senior center staff for a period of six months I would say and then that. renewable after that I suppose and I moved I, that, what I just said. Yeah, I'll say I think that you know, often make the invitation and let Brian and Jonathan work out the details. Yeah. Okay. Fred, do you say is that a second then? Second, yes. All those in favor, Joyce? Hi. Right. Fred? Yes. Me, yep. Yeah. Thank you, you guys. Um okay, and to discuss the renewal of the employment agreement between the town of Waitley and its current town administrator. Um, as much as I would like to table that for the foreseeable future, we should probably discuss it. Well, wouldn't that be part of executive session? I think, no, I, I think- I didn't just, understand. I, I, I think that we're just talking about whether we should, um, the, the, <clears throat> the way it's been done in the past is that the chair um discussed a contract extension with, mm -hmm. with with brian um the the chair went through a job performance review with brian um and and then i believe and correct me if i'm wrong brian we brought that to executive session to discuss after contract negotiations had taken place based upon the the job performance of that the three select board members had cumulatively done am i butchering that a lot or a little i i i think that's accurate um that's that that's what was done the last time right um, so so i don't think that that part choice needs executive session we just need as a group to um of authorize who will be the new chair um which i guess that's going to be joyce to start those conversations um and obviously, if we vote not to authorize that, then you know it, it's it's an indicator of, of of the direction that we we might want to take. But um, voting to authorize those conversations at least acknowledges that we are interested in the possibility of having Brian back for another three years. I know I am interested in watching mm -hmm. Brian work over the next three years mm -hmm. from afar. From yeah. afar. Yeah. Um, okay. 
All right, right. but we do have an executive session scheduled tonight as well. That was that was uh, just in case you guys wanted it. That's all. Oh, okay. Um. So I'm fine with being the negotiator. Um. That's fine with me. Although it, you know, I mean, you won't officially be not chair until more like the 14th of June. But that's true. But well, and, yeah. and I'm happy to do it if 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 you guys, yeah, trust me to make have those conversations when I'm not going to be right. And my schedule has just freed up a lot. I mean, graduation is this Saturday, Sunday. I, I'm happy to sit down with Brian over the next few weeks to to to, yeah. to hammer out hammer this out. It'll be the last thing that I do before I leave. I'm happy to do that. Um, yeah, as am I. Right. Okay. I, that's first, fine. The, the first thing we need to do is, is 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 I think we should distribute the job performance um mm -hmm. document and the three of us then fill out individually our perceptions and then we forward it to amy lavalley so that she can aggregate the numbers mm -hmm. and the responses and all that kind of stuff then that is distributed back to all of us and brian and, and we asked brian to also do a self-evaluation and then we package it all together so we see the the cumulative and then with that in mind, um, then whether it's me or Joyce, depending upon the timing of it all, um, we we start the conversations with Brian about about you know contract specifics, mm -hmm. um, and and then we go into ex executive session after that, I believe. Yeah. Okay. So today's executive session may or may not happen. If we agree on a process, it might be that we have nothing to talk about until we get, say, these performance reviews back. Right. Um, I would hope that we could make that be a fairly tight timeline. I could certainly respond uh, within a week of getting it, uh, or even there's well within a week um, of, of getting that. I wouldn't want to make it go too, too long because we really are six weeks out-ish, seven weeks out yep. from the end of this. Yeah, I, I'd like to get this wrapped up on this tight as timeline as possible. Yeah. Why, then why don't we agree that we try to wrap this up before I'm gone? That would be best. Okay. okay. And then if necessary. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I may be the one signing the thing in the end, but it, it, if we can get it taken care of uh, sooner rather than later, that'd be better, I think, for everybody. Yeah, that's fine. I have no problem with that. I have no problem committing to, um, if, if we can get the document, the performance review document, um, let's set a date for when we want this back. And then I'll just ask Amy LaValle to bug me to death until I submit to her my piece. Um, and in her job description, bugging people to death that they turn in the stuff they're supposed to do. Well, you know, I think there's a flexibility in there as needed, something in the right. job. Okay, all right. Um, <laughs> so just, I just wanted to recognize that, that, uh, that Amy's got special skills here. That's exactly. Right. Um, um, so who, so you want to have our respective pieces back by a week from tonight? Yeah, I think that's a reasonable uh, deadline. Yeah. Okay. Amy, can you bug me if I don't get it to you? That's I'll take that as a yes. Um, and <laughs> yeah, so Brian, yeah. you, can, you can get us the electronic version of the review. Um, yeah. tonight I'm going to fill it out for you. What's that? Oh, if you would please that would be just great all right um so do we need a we don't need a motion we just are agreeing on procedure we can go from there right brian yeah are you going to authorize one person or how do you want to go about that we'll authorize we'll, we'll authorize the chair whoever that may be to do this yeah we'll uh, authorize the chair and then if the chair changes on the 14th then it changes but hopefully we get it wrapped up before then right Exactly. So I would vote that we authorize the chair to enter negotiations uh, and uh, subject to everyone completing a review, a job review of the town administrator, uh, that being the select board and the administrator doing his own self assessment. Second. All those in favor? Joyce? Aye. Fred? Yes. Me, yes. Um, and 
So and, and so have them back and then by Friday of the following week, I mean of that same week, that is same week yeah. um, we will get the package distributed out to the three of us and Brian. Okay. Okay. And then and then if that schedule goes as planned, um, Brian, when when we meet our deadlines, why don't you and I plan on setting a time for the following week where we can sit down and 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 discuss this. Okay. Okay. So it's potentially possible at the meeting, the day after town meeting, that we may have an executive session. Possible. Uh, okay. Possible. Okay. Okay. Um, I, and actually, I would really, I would really appreciate that because I know that Memorial Day weekend. I will be, I have a son graduating from high school that day. Mm. So I'm going to be kind of busy with a lot of family and stuff. So I won't be devoted to this at all. Mm -hmm. so, um, so yeah, that timeline works out really well for me. So, okay. So, okay. So um, town administrator updates, Brian, what do we got? Yep. Um, I think we've spoken enough about the annual town meeting, May 24, 2022, 6 p.m. at the elementary school. Um, we're having issues in the town offices with the, the HVAC controller. Um, it's original to the building, and it's, I guess, it's not controlling things like it should. Um, so um, some of the issues we're having are we have, um, uh, we have essentially really cold air blowing at the same time heat's on. Um, and so um, it, it really needs to be changed. Um, I'm gonna have a proposal from the company um, who installed the original one about 18 years ago um, to put in one. They came out a couple of weeks ago when I was having connectivity issues between how I controlled with the computer and the controller upstairs. And um, it's, it's old, they don't really support it anymore. So it's really something that needs to be done. So we have enough uh, funds left in the town building's general expense account. And we actually budget for HVAC repairs. Um, if it tells you anything what we think about the HVAC system here. So uh, we have the funds to cover that. But I just wanted to let you know because it's, it's it's just under $6,000, so. Um, yeah, it sounds like a worthy expense. Yeah. Um, I mean, controllers can save you a lot of energy too when the controllers are working well. It really helps. Yeah. yeah, and they can cost you a lot of energy when they're not. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, what point exactly? Um, we talked about the RAP program, the Winter Recovery Assistance Program um, that Keith had talked about. Uh, Fred's question earlier was about, in terms of about the interchangeability of the funds. Yeah. Um, one of the things we need to be mindful of is that chapter 90, chapter 90 funds can roll over from fiscal year to fiscal year to fiscal year. And whereas the wrap funds, they have they don't have to be spent. So we just have to make sure that um, you spend, spend those spend those essentially um, so that we don't leave anything on the table for those. Um, last thing, uh, police station septic repairs are done, except for the retiling of the floor, uh, which needs the 30 day waiting period because the, the concrete needs to secure before they can tile over it with any hope that the tiles will stick. Mm -hmm. um, so that it, it, that project is it, is pretty much done. Um, that's so, been covered by insurance. Yeah, uh, the majority of that's covered by insurance, except for the uh, deductible and the cost of the pipe. So, like with all insurance, it's covered by insurance, but you end up paying for it over the next couple of years. Um, okay. and, and as I'm and I'm mindful because. Each year, when we do the budget, we keep seeing our charge premiums for the, the immediate expense is covered by the immediate expense is covered, uh, but our insurance premiums keep creeping up every year um, because it mm -hmm. because of that claim. So I think we just need to be careful about that. I mean, I think this would make sense because it was a yeah. significant amount, but um, I agree. Okay, that's about it. Okay. Then I would uh, move that we adjourn. Second. All those in favor. Aye. Oops, sorry. Aye. Hold on, yeah. <laughs> Choice. Aye. Fred. Aye. 
Me, yep. Okay. Great meeting you guys. Thank you so much.